Shakespeare. Shakespeare said, "All the world's a stage, mm. and we're all actors there." Welcome to Vermont. Oh! Howdy! Welcome home. Welcome to Vermont. All right, are you ready? Can I hear somebody say? and gentlemen and you hippies <laughs> we're gonna take you on a little trip around the world don't worry it's a short trip it's a cheap trip too <laughs> a lot of people are already tripping here it's okay oh welcome to Vermont rainbow gathering national here in the US of A getting together like nowhere like nothing before Welcome home. This song is all about the Roma people, the gypsies, that must move from place to place to feel alive. And the gage, the non-gypsy, who need a place to, to root, to have as a home. And the gypsy and the gage, and have some fun together. Oh, yeah? Fun? Yeah. Romance? Yeah. Passion? Yes. 
Oh, that's a lot like the Rainbow Gathering. Yeah. Oh. Ah, but there's a problem that could happen here, too. But the Gypsy and the Gage should not get married. What she's trying to say is, if you are rocking it on the road, and you fall in love with someone who's a grower, Whoa. and cannot move around, you're gonna suffer. Somebody's gonna be miserable. One or the other, you're on the road, you're in the farm. It's complicated. No, no, no legage. Listen, it'll help you. Welcome to Vermont. I heard some rainbow rumors that Bernie Sanders and Ben and Jerry are gonna show up here. Welcome to the Vermont Gathering. <laughs> Welcome to Vermont! We love you! Welcome to Vermont! Welcome home! Welcome home! Welcome home, Rainbow Gathering 2016, Vermont. Welcome to Vermont. I met her down by the sea. Her blonde hair and the blue eyes so bad. We had passion under the blue sight. But in the morning she knew I could not. Welcome to Vermont. Welcome home, relatives. Welcome home, Vermont gathering. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome to Vermont gathering. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. Why do you keep coming to Rambo? It's a draw, don't you know? Like the sun draws into the noon, it draws into the sunset, and you're drawn to the sunset. It's a draw on my awe that makes me want to come repeatedly. This is my 40th gathering out of 45 years. Through joys and tears, through conquering all our fears, I come because I'm very addicted. Everything is different, especially when 45 years have gone by. Uh, and especially when it's rainbow. It's probably changed several times. Um, you know, one of the things that I find kind of rare, and I think I should say, is that somebody thinks they have a concept of what a rainbow gathering is, or what a rainbow gathering should be, or whatever. But as we well know, there are no shoulds. So it's that exploration spirit of, you know, who am I? Who, who is this guy and who are we? Why are we here? So all of these deep questions being brought to the surface every time makes the whole thing more alive and more real. And, and we don't try to come on with egos. You gotta watch that ego. We are doing really important work here. And it's a big job to work towards world peace. Just five years old, I had a vision. And in my vision, um, now it's just really little. I was raised in Baltimore, in the suburbs, and it was a dream I had. And it was after dinner, you know, kind of family time, home evening time. <clears throat> my mom was washing dishes, my dad was reading the paper, my brothers were playing a game, I was probably drawing. And uh, all of a sudden we all got up without even speaking to each other and walked down into our backyard. And then we had a big hedge between us and the neighbors in the back. But even though I couldn't see them, I sensed that they were also outside. And then it was like this grid that just went out all over the planet. And I could see the little children and their families in Africa and China and all over the planet. Everybody had just stopped what they were doing and, and stepped outside. We all looked up into the sky together at the same moment, every single soul on the planet. And there was this beautiful being made of light. 
are like the Aurora Borealis, although I'd never seen that. I don't give a lot of thought to it afterwards, and I thought, wow, if we, everybody on the planet knew that we were all one family, that we were all brothers and sisters, that we were a rainbow planetary family of the Earth, every one of us, and we were, we were, we were one, then no one would, you know, not see the hungry child. All the children would be dead. No one would be taking up arms against their brothers and sisters or moms and dads or little baby brothers and sisters. That would, you know, it would be the end of war. It would be the end of, of hunger. And I thought, wow, this is it. This is what we need to do. This is what is needed in the world. And, and I will devote things. my life so, to yes, it. I've been coming to Rainbow for uh, over 30 years now. Um, and it's a very important uh, thing. It's an event. I learned everything I know about anarchism uh, from Rainbow. I mean, it's not explicitly uh, identified as an anarchistic event, but it is an anarchistic organism in that it exists in the anarchistic framework of anarchy in that things happen because the people make them happen because it happens because we all organize ourselves into various autonomous little uh, councils and, and clusters and if something needs to get done it gets done it's not hierarchical How are you going to get a pony to everyone? I always want to know. Oh, the uh, pony system work? Do you, is that well, it's, it's, it, there will be transitional times, of course, and they will I'll not be easy. Um, you know, the, the, the transition... Are we, we going to have to give up certain things for the ponies? Those who give up liberty in exchange for ponies deserve neither. No. <laughs> in Ponytopia, we will have both liberty and ponies. Yes, yeah. indeed. A pony-based economy is going to be a wonderful place. Yeah. They say laughter is the best medicine. Do you think it should be available without a prescription? Yes, it should be legalized. Absolutely. And what's what's your stance on providing a path to Earthling status for zombie aliens? Uh, well, we're, we're working on that. I'll have to consult some people you. on that. Thank you. We have some very smart and scientists on that. Thank you. I'm
little bit of note, where I'm sitting here is in Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor is, in biblical times, uh, uh, the beloved John and the James, the brother of Jesus, walked on the Mount Tabor with Jesus. And they saw Jesus become so radiant, transfigured, as he called it. And they saw Elijah and Moses with Jesus. And for me, it's like, whoa. And then after that, after they finished that tea, uh, and if they looked over there in a reflection of a pool of water, they would have seen how radiant their own beings would be. Yeah, so 
how I did start this painting. Um, so I threw everything in, and uh, me and Troy have been messing with it for a little while. Just to kind of refine it, put some uh, more painterly qualities into it. Derek sent out an invitation back in 1972 to come to this gathering in Rocky Mountain National Forest in Colorado, and so I went and joined the Rainbow. Didn't need to have any more invitations. We're all invited forever. There we go. Uh, I feel it hit. Oh, it feels good. Yeah, I'm gonna, let me line your dental chakras here. Whoosh! <laughs> but I think Human public assemblage is uh, one of the great natural things that is healthy for humanity. In the olden days, tribes did it. They'd meet up in the mountains or down by the lake at the solstice or at the winter or spring equinoxes, and they would or the full moons, and they would hold their meetings and their talks, their councils, and that's a little how the gatherings work. It isn't that we come out here and we all hold hands and the angel of light descends into each one of us and, you know, twangs a magic wand and makes us peaceful. It's that the kids learn each other's games and the grown-ups learn each other's songs and the chefs learn each other's recipes and everybody learns each other's stuffs and their mythologies and their meditations and their prayers and, you know, because all that stuff is strange to somebody who's not from your own land or your own truck. That's what the rainbow teaches, is that not, it's not that, we're, oh, we're all gonna go live in the woods, we're all gonna live in the woods, we're gonna leave the cities. No, it's that we come here and we learn the skills that let us live peacefully in the rest of the world. And I think that's why we think of this as a cathedral or a temple or a sacred ground, because it refreshes us, it rejuvenates us, it re-inspires us. What would I tell a person about rainbow? Well, sex, drugs, rock and roll. That's it. <laughs> sex, drugs, and rock and roll. But I might say sex, drugs, and music. What's I, your favorite part about rainbow, real quick? Oh, I just love it so much. It's yeah. a beautiful, beautiful place. Uh, I just have so many, many uh, wonderful friends here. And I guess it's uh, the people that make it, but it's also just the fact that it exists. Uh, what do you like about Rainbow? I like the opportunity to play my tuba and how flabbergasted people think um, it is that I have it here. Um, people really get confused here easily when they see the tuba, they're shocked or something like that. And I like that, that look at that on their face. Yeah, we got a lot of kid, kid traps. symbolizes uh, freedom. No, the eagle. What bird symbolizes love? No. What bird symbolizes true love? That's all we need.
to do is follow our hearts and trust. And we do need to live more simply. We do need to live more simply because there's plenty for everyone as long as we're sharing. And it's all about the children. You know, we have to save this planet for the children and the seven generations to come. My elder said we must be living for the unborn generation. Not just for ourselves, not just for our children or our grandchildren, but at least seven generations ahead. Our children's 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 children's, children's children. That's a couple of hundred years there. You gotta think ahead. Nobody's thinking that way. We started thinking that way, but maybe we'll straighten out the In the beginning. I saw the rainbow as a spiritual event. I saw it as a place for people from different stripes and backgrounds, the anti-war movement, the returning Vietnam vets to come together and have a meditative prayer for peace. And whether that was meditation, which was non-religious, or a prayer, which might be religious, we were all going to sit in this meadow, we were going to be together in peace and wish peace on the world. I saw that as a very spiritual thing. Then, this village evolves surrounding that silence, all around the big nothing, the emptiness, the void, the eternal mystery. So around that we have the village. Perfect one, I want you to dip your dyslexic rainbow intellect into my soft and sultry lips so I can taste your thoughts and close my eyelids and daydream your inner being. In kaleidoscope lucidity, respect me. Mentally caress me with intrigue. Spiritually complete me. Sleep beneath my mango tree. Carefully care for me. For I am like a fragile ecosystem nestled deep inside the Amazons. Amaze me with your gaze into my dark brown eyes. Reflecting a mirror silhouette so vivid, I fully visualize how you perceive me with your scope of seeing. Yearn for me like the first drip drop of a downy cloud after a sun-dry drought. Love me so pure and radiant that hate needs to stand by their side because with you by my side there's no need for hate's existence. Render me a kiss so tender that, that I have to reflect back and ponder whether that euphoric experience really existed. Be silly with me and hide under my hairy armpits and fuck it no if no one else understands or comprehends that shit. shit. Bite me like a thirsty <laughs> Transylvanian Romanian. I won't get lost between feathered felt mazes of snuggling comfort on a nippy day. I want you to find me when I've misplaced me. I want you to help pave a path sprinkled with sparkles of fairy dust twining up to our mental growth moons will be full when we skinny dip even though we both don't know how to swim float free with me along river bends in our makeshift bamboo raft or is non-existent yet this persistent current flows you and me together holding perfectly fitted hands a spine to do nothing but live learn love change and be perplex me with your unconditional love leaving me to feel so indescribably fulfilled that words can even fathom this state of being enchant me with your unencumbered ways of teaching me encant me your mantras and meditate with me releasing our auras of color spilling so so brightly that we make Royal Borealis jealous. Make love to me until a pineal glance. Both reach kundalinis of supernova beauty. Sweat trickling, levitating on tie dyed bubbles until our soul emerge freely into one higher being. Come here and just sit next to me. Thank you.
coming since 1972 when I was 23 a lot like you but it's the force of course from the source that I come to feel this flow of personality individuality coming together in the community drinking tea at tea time in magic rhyme all the time now I'm seeing more and more that these gatherings are educational events and the most important thing that's happening here is people are coming here from the cities, whether it's the inner cities or the suburbs or the industrial areas or, or uh, fancy beachfront cottages, whatever people are coming from, uh, mostly America, but also other countries, and are, they are learning to be the, what I think of as the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. The rainbow, oh, that's the party in the woods. Oh, that's people drumming and dancing and singing around the fire and making fantastic bagels and donuts and feeding each other and partying and showing off on stage for each other. And that's the rainbow. But the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow is the community of people working together making a society that cares for the old, cares for the young, makes sure everybody has a square meal, makes sure everybody has some medical care, makes sure that everybody has uh, uh, comfort and a dry, warm place to sleep, and caring for each other. And so we show this is possible. And to do that, we have to educate, educate, educate. And when the question again was, I would say to somebody who hasn't been to the gathering, uh, come camp with us. Uh, you might find some of the most beautiful people that you've ever met in your life. The reincarnation of him is coming tomorrow. So, tomorrow here by the tent, oh, he yeah, shall be I teaching people tent. how to levitate. Really? Yes. Levitation is possible. Okay. That's it. Constant magic. Um, so, what are you doing here at Rainbow right now? Right now, I've been charged by Pirate Mike with a quest to tag a thousand people with hug life and to give them a hug. In doing so, I earn a tattoo, hug life. Because, man, hug life don't fuck around, man. It's all about the hugs. We don't shake hands. No, fuck that. We hug, man. This is family shit. All right, be careful, hippies. That's what this is about. Some of you just got here. You don't know what to do. You're a little frightened. Number one, don't 
you don't want to have those babies that only wear tops. You don't want to say anything to them. If they're not wearing a bottom and only a top, that baby is a fed. Don't wash those babies. Don't sleep in the meadow because that's where the Krishnas feed the elephants. Everybody knows that. And then you know, like Tom's got to come out in the morning and pick them up, and that's no good. Uh, don't pick up lighters because they probably belong to a hippie. But number two, they drop them in drones overnight. They got GPS units and little clickers in them. And I swear to God, they'll catch you. In, if you do more than 100 clicks, they'll catch you. They know about it, man. They come in at night. They take all the hippies to Area 51 anyway and do weird tests on them. Uh, what else do you want to know here? Uh, yeah, old baby's not wearing pants. That's a big one. Uh, if you go to Nick at night, you can get chicken and waffle snuff. I know this to be a fact. Chicken and waffle snuff? Oh, it's the best, man. Chicken and waffles melts in your mouth. And, uh, this is a true story that I heard, and I heard it backwards, but it turned out to be true. At, at Dirty Kid Village, I was told that a big guy took a poop right in the trail. And then a dog came up, a little dog came up and ate it. Now it turned out to be not true. It was a baby took a poop in the trail, and it was a big dog that came up. <laughs> Just be careful out there, hippies. Wear shoes. I know you all got the reefer madness, but please be careful out there, hippies. We are building the bridge because it was a lot of mud in here, and it was like very difficult to walk in. So we are putting like branches. So. It makes it easy for the people or for the cats to move in here. Yeah. Um, what makes Rainbow different than other festivals? Well, festivals, festies, your generations talk. They they got into this money, money, thing, money, thing, money, thing, money thing. But see, it's not a money culture. The energy is what it's about. The kitchens work. No one's paid. People, some people put in thousands of dollars. Some people come here for years and put one dollar in the head. But it's what you give that makes this family live. Now the festies charge four or five hundred dollars. They get all the money. They give a few people free, and they take all that money and they profit. The only profit here is the profits that you meet inside each other. It's one step outside of the money corporate system. Nobody here is being paid to park your car. Nobody here is being paid to cook your food. Nobody here is being paid to take your sanitation, uh, take care of your sanitation. And it doesn't cost anything, but what that means is you have to do it. <laughs> Amazon. <laughs> Ding dong. Wiley Coyote. At me catapult. <laughs> hey! Hey! <laughs> 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 no, no.
<laughs> Ding dong. Here. Wiley Coyote. Acme Helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, rainbow gathering. Hello. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about your first gathering experience. If you remember any of it, <laughs> if you remember it, you weren't really there. <laughs> 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 
Have you ever noticed Focus. Rainbow is a heckling kind of a crowd? <laughs> so that's right. Learn to love, love to learn. This never ends. So what we ask the people to do is be in the circle instead of in the center of the circle. We only like the, the children in the center. We like to leave the center open for anybody to come. So each individual can come in, stand in that circle, which is the big thing, right? Because that's the big thing. That's what we do that is changing the earth. We allow each person to be, and to be right here now, and people, other people say, whoa, we witness, <coughs> whatever they got to say. And if that person, as long as it's open, right? Each person can bring their own God in there, their own goddess, their own spirit, their own expression, their anarchy, their atheist, whatever. And then like that. And besides, look at this, if we had a pole there, what would happen if Jesus Christ were to appear? He'd have a pole stuck up his ass. It's not a good idea. That's why we try to keep the area open in the center. It's exciting. You know, there's an old phrase, it's not mine, that says, uh, three months is a fad, three years is a movement, three generations is a culture. And I think that's what's happening, is we're becoming a part of a world culture that's outside of the banks, the corporations, the, the, uh, the governments. enlightened being of light because I see you as enlightened being of light and that's my delight of enlightenment because if you're in bliss no matter what happens to this body no matter what happens to this friends because the more people you love the more things you love the more suffering you're gonna have when that goes away but when rainbow ends I just prepare for the next one yeah just like life just like all your questions that's the key you see we're all in this to be no more, no less. To be or not to be is not a question, not a quest. It's the answer. <laughs> to be or not to be. It operates on many, many, many different levels, and you can make of it what you will. You can, you will experience it how you will, uh, where you're coming from. Certainly, colors your perceptions, but if you are open, um, you can learn a lot. You will meet many people with many different perspectives. They will uh, allow you to open your mind and see things in new ways, different ways. Um, 
and there's a lot of cross-pollination of a lot of subcultures. This is a gathering of the tribes. So come on, bring your tribe, bring your customs, and we will try and find out how to coexist and learn from one another. Thank you. And how I think um, it's more trying to show the positive, accentuate the positive, as opposed to protest the negative. <laughs> You know, they called us all kinds of names. They called us dirty hippies. That was the biggest one. But they called us lazy. They called us stupid. They called us dropouts. They called us all these different kinds of things. You know, I'd rather see the earth uh, organized by artists instead of military industrialists. Oh, those artists, they couldn't do anything. Well, look, the military industrialists have darn near destroyed civilization. Thank you very much. They've set everybody against each other. They have put out more nerve gas weapons, nuclear weapons, and other terror weapons that are sooner or later going to leak into the most lunatic hands, as though the hands that made them weren't lunatic enough. Come from the heart. Don't philosophize and talk about statistics or anything like that. Go right for what you're feeling. Go to the gut. Because that's what's hard in our regular life, and that's what our life is. And that's what we want to know about each other and support. I would say, I would say to a young person coming to the gathering, that the gatherings are the proof of the pudding, that it is possible for human beings of all different stripes to live together in peace, work together in peace, take care of the environment, that it is the question of, oh, it wouldn't really work if all you eco-activists were in charge. You know what? It can really work. It does really work. This is the proof of the pudding. Any advice for people who haven't come? Well, by all means, come. Come. Find a kitchen. Good village is good. A kitchen to connect with. Here's the poem, in fact. It's for all you out there who haven't been to a rainbow. A glorious experience. You might think of yourself as a beatnik, a hippie, a punk rocker, a hip hop, whatever countercultural thing you identify with. You'll find your brothers and sisters right here. And this is how it works. But take what you need in the kitchen. Give what you can, where you can, when you can. However you can, in other words, lend a hand. And I want to say, take what you need. Is that what we want to put that base is what you need is way different from take what you want. If everybody took out what they needed, this would be a very different world. Mm. And you'd be fed here and you'll get what you need, you can lend a hand. That's what that's about. Mm. Give what you can, where you can, when you can, however you can. In other words, lend a hand. And what you see happening around these circles, around these fires, and these walks, these trails, lending a hand, I mean, strangers I becoming friends, friends becoming family, family becoming community, and community and the communities on the move, multicultural, that's our movement, power of the people, to say hey, we're brought together for a reason, and that reason is that we love one another, brought together for a reason, that reason is that we heal one another, brought together for a reason, that reason is that we complete one another. Brought together for a reason, and that reason is we complement one another. Like what? Yin and yang, left and right, up and down, old and yeah, old and young, man and woman, rock and roll. And it's not like we should try to fulfill a prophecy by dressing a certain way or going to certain sacred sites. It's we should try to fulfill uh, what I think is the, the 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 great missing prophecy of our times, which is peace.
mm. which is justice, which is uh, uh, human beings sharing and caring like a great uh, family. Out there, brothers and sisters, understand this. I'm an early, I'm a mouth like many others. My Bible <coughs> says to be a real early at a rainbow gathering, this is the simple thing you have to do. If you come to a gathering from sea camp or scout camp all the way through to when the gathering flowers and you help set it up and then when it goes lotus, which is when all the thousands come home and then in the middle of the scattering, you're going around and you're going, help, oh, clean up as you go. And you're like, maybe you're working fire watch during the gathering and you're parking, you're helping out all the way through the gathering and then you go all the way to the cleanup and restoration I call that the ride. And people who have gone on that ride, <coughs> well, I go around and I say, you know what, you've been on that ride? Well, you're in the, what I call the early club, which entitles you to absolutely nothing else but the pleasure of having been here earlier and doing it <laughs> earlier than other people. Get you a good kick in the teeth if you don't just get left behind. <laughs> <laughs> and the vibe about this is <clears throat> they're not a hundreds of thousands of people who have been in this ride who have come to the gathering. But we encourage everyone to take that ride and at least take one little part of the ride. Dig a shitter, help somebody get home, uh, help walk, uh, watch kids at Kid Village, walk Shauna Cena in the, in the night, peace scenes, look after people, do fire watch, <coughs> carry water, chop wood, you know, run help shuttle. the people, run shuttles. Look at what needs to be done. Realize it's your gathering as much as mine. And the way it works is we, you and I, are each individually responsible. But really, I love you all. Thank you and bless you. And in the one way, to the true peace, friendship, one who is alone, who has no second, whom some call the Great Spirit. L O. Rock and roll. Thank you, brother. Welcome to the cleanup. Welcome to people loving each other. 